The Lord be with you. Good morning to you all. Thank you for joining us for Elkin Presbyterian Church's stream service. Thanks to all involved in our drive-through meal sponsored by the endowment and congregational care committees. The meal was wonderful. The fellowship uplifting and the generosity of our church family is greatly appreciated. Elkin Presbyterian Church is accepting donations of non-perishable food Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for CBLers Elementary School's Food Insecurity Program. Also remember, try C and our blessing box in our efforts to combat hunger and food insecurity. Elkin Presbyterian Church demonstrates the love of Christ through serving others. Your tithes and offerings are critical to continue our church's mission work and meet our financial responsibilities. Thank you for remaining financially faithful. If you have a prayer request or a need, please contact the church office. And if you know of a situation where the church can help, please contact Pastor Dan. The church office will be open Monday through Thursday, September the 14th through the 17th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And when visiting Elkin Presbyterian, please remember to practice the three W's of health safety. Wear a mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands regularly throughout the day. The Christian Education Committee has been hard at work planning several exciting Sunday school offerings. There are two events planned for our youth. Mark your calendars for September the 26th. At 9 a.m., the youth will be in service cleaning the prayer garden and enjoying lunch together. And on October the 24th, there will be a pumpkin carving extravaganza. Ron Ashman is leading a Zoom book study discussing white fragility by Robin D'Angelo. Please contact Ron to be put on the roster to receive invitations to those Zoom meetings. All are welcomed. Shelby O'Toole will be leading the adult parlor class. This class will follow the present word, an adult Bible curriculum from the PC USA. You can pick up a book from the church office and send Shelby your email for an invite to those meetings. Elkin Presbyterian's evening Bible study will resume at its regular schedule the second Monday of the month at 7 p.m. starting September the 14th. That's tomorrow. And we'll be meeting here in the fellowship hall at the church. Please contact email Veronica Sellers for more information if you have questions. Now, let us worship God. is in unison. Our God protects the lowly and avenges the misdeeds of the mighty. God brings forth justice and righteousness, saving the weak from the cruelty of the powerful. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first epistle of John reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. May be trusted to forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Trusting God's mercy and grace, then let us make our prayers of confession. Merciful God, we are ever in need of your grace and mercy. When we have injured your little ones, forgive us. When we have laughed at others' misfortunes, pardon us. When we have belittled the weak, humble us. Help us walk the trials of life with your powerful hope and your loving grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This statement is true. It should be universally accepted that Christ Jesus came to rescue sinners. He personally died 
He personally bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading today comes from Psalm 84, 1 through 9. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for the joy of the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Shalom. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. Their early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength, the God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Shalom. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. Second lesson comes from the 18th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. The reading begins at the 21st verse. Listen for God's word here. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy, seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me. And I will pay you everything. And out of pity, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So, my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Sometimes not an easy word to hear. But once again, Peter's just got to be dumb as a box of rocks. Jesus has just gone to talk about uh, how to deal with conflict in the church and the necessity of keeping it above board and treating each other with love. And then Peter says, Duh. If another member of the church sins against me, should I forgive him? As many as seven times. Now that number was not just pulled out of the air. That's a very powerful 
number in Hebrew numerology. In Hebrew numerology, the number seven is a combination of the number of the earth and the number of the heavens, three and four. And it means, it stands for perfect good. It's really not that complicated because one less than perfect good is perfect evil, six, or six, 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 which stands for really cruddy evil. So Peter says seven times, which is the perfect number. If I, if, I, if I forgive him seven times, how will that do? And Jesus says, no, that won't do. You can't do lip service on forgiveness. 77 times maybe, if you really mean it. But listen to this parable. And he goes on to talk about this wicked servant who although he is granted forgiveness by his Lord, wreaks havoc on his fellows. There is within the school of theology a great debate. It's uh, less now with COVID on the scene, but the debate was between first world Christians and third world Christians known as liberationists. The first world Christians put great status and great stress on orthodoxy, that is, right belief. Whereas our sisters and brothers in the third world said, no, orthopraxy is what's important. That is, the practice of doing the faith. Now, it's a both and, of course. You can't have one without the other. And I think Jesus tells them this parable just to remind them that you can't simply put forgiveness in a kind of hazy, hypothetical place. If somebody comes, should I, should I forgive them seven times is a kind of an academic response, really. Jesus 77 times blasts the academic response out of the water. No, you've got to have forgiveness at your heart. That's hard. That's really hard. When I lived in Greenville, uh, <laughs> one of my neighbors decided that I was a bad guy. Actually, it came down to the fact that I wouldn't put his sign in my yard. And he was running for school board. And I tried to explain to him that the house I was living in was not really my house. It was the church's house. And I didn't put any signs in the church's yard. But he became furious with me and went after me. He, he wrote uh, op-eds against me. Uh, it, it was kind of nasty. Uh, he tried to disassociate my friends from me and succeeded sometimes. And then one day I was at a basketball game where my son and his son were playing together. And as the game broke up, he walked almost right into me. He didn't say boo at first. I said, hey, how are you? You know, I'm just fine. Have you come to your senses? I said, well, I was kind of hoping you'd come to yours. But I just want you to know, I hold you no grudge. It's okay. Nothing's happened that I can't handle. Everything's all right. You forgive me, he said. Truly, I think I do. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of new at this forgiveness stuff myself, but I think I probably do forgive you. Ask me in a week. We'll see you then. He did. But I did forgive him. Have you ever been forgiven? Really, have you ever been forgiven of something you'd done to somebody else? A brother, a sister? mother or father and found forgiveness because of your ill deed. It's a humbling experience. But it's an incredible learning experience. It teaches us our need of grace and it teaches us to be thankful when grace shows up. So here in this story, Peter, bless his heart, if another 
member of the church sins against me, Lord, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Seven times. Perfect forgiveness. And Jesus says, no, it's not perfect until you go beyond what's required. Until you forgive from your heart. Orthodoxy is not the key. Orthopraxy is the key. We can talk about forgiveness all day long. But if we don't forgive those who have sinned against us, we've just only paid lip service to the good news of Jesus Christ. I don't want to be in need of forgiveness. Do you? It's not a pleasant place to be. And I don't want to be the one who has to do the forgiving. That's not a pleasant place to be either. But if it comes up, I want it to be from here from deep inside my faith. And I think that's what Jesus wants to. Thanks be to God. Now we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed to say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's good to remember that as part of our discipleship, stewardship not only of what God has given us, but stewardship of the relationships we share with one another is also an important part of our discipleship. Jesus, keep me near.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your presence with us each day. And as we look around our world, we wonder sometimes if you are powerful enough to handle these events. We have seen the terrible fires in the western part of our country. And now those on the Gulf Coast await another storm. And we're amazed that some have never put together the science of global warming and these horrible events. Gracious God, we pray for all of your children who are facing calamity this day and pain. <coughs> we pray for those who are in hospital, those who are ill, for those who are facing long protocols long recuperations and need your presence to be with them to bring about wholeness and healing gracious God we pray for all of those who are striving to harness this virus somehow for first responders and medical personnel who are caring for those struck down by it we pray for those scientists who are searching diligently for a vaccine in some way to somehow treat this disease. We pray, O oh God, for those this past week as we remembered those lost in the tragic events of September 11th, those years ago, and pray that you will be with us to help us move in a positive direction as a nation. Guide and direct our leaders. Be with those who lead at every level of government, that they may be driven by your spirit, whether they give assent to it or not. And gracious God, be with us. As your church here in this place, we need your spirit to keep us together even when we are apart, to help us to reflect the good news in our lives and in our life together. So hear our prayers for we make them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the peace and presence of God's Holy Spirit will rest and abide with us this day and forever. Amen.